an unorthodox and radical current, avant-garde is synonymous with pushing the boundaries of culture for well over a century. Since its first inception, this movement generated major progress in art, music, architecture, theater and film, and most importantly in fashion. In fashion terms, avant-garde spanned generations of notable designers who reshaped the way people perceive or wear clothes. Characterized as progressive and forward-thinking, the once eyebrow-raising avant-garde fashion style is now a worldwide phenomenon. Among Craig Green and Comme des Garçons, Yoji Yamamoto stands strong as one of the most influential avant-garde fashion brands out there. Yoji Yamamoto was born in 1943 in Tokyo. From a young age, he understood that he wanted something more, anything but a traditional lifestyle. As his father passed away during the Second World War, he was raised by his mother who was a dressmaker. Yamamoto attended and graduated in law from Keio University, Tokyo. His artistic spirit still dragged him into fashion, so instead of opting for a traditional lifestyle, he asked his mother if he could help her at work. She initially didn't want her son to pursue a career in fashion, but finally decided that Yoji can learn from sewing assistants and focus on cutting fabric. Additionally, he enrolled at Bunka Fashion University in Tokyo and graduated in 1969. He was a very prominent student, which helped him to secure a price to go to Paris for one year. Unfortunately, it wasn't a successful stay, and he was confronted with the reality of the ready-to-wear era, meanwhile he only studied haute couture. After coming back to Japan, he was again working with his mother, taking measurements, cutting fabric and doing fittings. Yamamoto gradually started to realize that he doesn't like the way the customers of his mother dress. The rejection of highly feminine clothing that revealed the body was the driving factor to establish his first label, Wise, in Tokyo in 1972. His style was controversial at the time. At the beginning, Yoji Yamamoto opened his story with the intention to provide for women to wear men's clothes. He was aiming to dress an independent and strong woman. Instead of revealing the body, he wanted to conceal it, to guard women in a way. In an interview with the New York Times in 1983, Yamamoto said of his designs, When I started designing, I wanted to make men's clothes for women. More recently, he stated, When I started making clothes for my lion eyes in 1977, all I wanted was for women to wear men's clothes. I jumped on the idea of designing coats for women. It meant something to me, the idea of a coat guarding and hiding a woman's body. I wanted to protect the woman's body from something, maybe from men's eyes or a cold wind. Yamamoto's pieces are often in black, a color almost signature to his brand. He describes the color as modest and arrogant at the same time. He also called black lazy and easy, yet mysterious. For him, it gives an air of being unbothered and not wanting to bother other people in return. These thoughts are reflected in Yamamoto's designs, which often evoke a sense of effortlessness yet elegance that's hard to grasp, but it is also very intriguing. Another element often seen in his works are distress patterns, which he describes as good and beautiful, despite being referred to by former fashion journalists as dirty clothing. His clothes are different from the clean and tailored look many designers lean towards and are reflective of his own history of finding success despite his non-luxurious background. According to Olivier Sayard, a fashion historian, Yoji Yamamoto's work disrupts what we know of as fashion and introduces pieces that disconcert, puzzle, irritate and disturb, because they are filled with imperfections we often don't seek out. Yamamoto finds symmetry and perfection unacceptable. He has successfully fought against them by being one of the most successful designers of the 20th century. Through disruptive and unconventional pieces, Yamamoto made holes, rips, tattered clothing and androgynous silhouettes high fashion, not just because they're trendy, but because they're a statement that resonates through decades.